Okay, second graders, for our read aloud today, we have to finish Judy, Junie B. Jones' Sneaky Peaky Spying. Um, if you remember, we have one chapter to go. We were going to finish it on Tuesday, and we never got the chance to do that. So, we are in the last chapter called Grandparents Day. But let's review what happened in chapter 7. It was called Sour Grapes. So I'm going to let you think for a minute, or a little bit less than that, what happened in this chapter. So Junie um, told the principal the secret of Mrs. eating the grapes. And this has kind of explained herself and said the reason why she was trying the grapes at the store was because she wanted to make sure they weren't sour. And then this chapter ends with um, Junie having the principal smile back at her because another secret just slipped out. And that secret that she just told the principal about was when she saw Mrs smooching somebody at the grocery store too. So now she let two secrets out to the principal. And that's how that chapter ended. So the last chapter is Grandparents Day. Mrs. went back to room nine. That's because the bell rang to start kindergarten, of course. Only principal didn't let me go too. He said to stay in my wood chair. Then he called mother on the telephone and he told her all about the grocery store and also about my sneaky peaky spying. Principal was a squealer. What do you think squealer means? Kind of like a tattletale, right? Principal was telling mom about what Junie was doing and Junie didn't like that. After that, mother said she wanted to talk to me. Only when I said hi, she didn't even say hi back. She said she wasn't very happy with me, Missy. And no more spying means no more spying and we would talk about it after her work. Then mother said she never wants to get any more phone calls from principal. Did I understand? Did I? Did I? I looked at principal. Mother says not to call her anymore, I told them. Then mother did a loud groan in the phone, except I don't know why. After that, me and her hanged up, and principal said I could go to room nine. And so I run there speedy quick. Only too bad for me, because I got there too late to sing My Country Tizzy Thee, Sweet Land of Liver Free, which is my favorite flag song. And so I just had to sit down at my table, and that's all. I showed Lucille my band-aid. See, my head's not blowed up, I said very happy. Too bad, said a mean boy named Jim. I made a fist at him, then me and him got in a scuffle. Scuffle is the school word for I accidentally tore his shirt. Only guess what? I didn't even get in trouble. Cause then, just then, the grandparents came in room nine for grandparents day. Hey, there's mine, there's mine, I hollered very excited. Mine is the grandpa with the baldy head. Mine too, a girl, said a girl named Charlotte. Mine too, said my boyfriend named Ricardo. Then a grandmother with blonde hair came in, and she had on long red fingernails and dangly earrings with jewels on them. That's my Nana, said Lucille. I smiled at her. Your Nana looks like a money bag, Lucille, I said. After that, another grandma came in, and she ran over to that gym I hate, and she tried to hug him very tight. Only that mean Jim kept on standing there, and he didn't even hug her back. I tapped on her. I will hug you, I said. And so then me and her hugged real tight. <laughs> so this must be Jim, and that must be his grandma, who Junie is hugging. Looks like Jim's not really happy about Junie hugging his grandma. I hate you, I, or I hate your grand boy, I said very sweet. Just then, Mrs. clapped her hands loud together, and she made the grandparents sit down in the back of the room. Then the children talked all about what we do in room nine. 
It is fun here, said my bestest friend, that Grace. We learn to count and to read and to wash our hands after we go to the bathroom. And we learn recess and snacks and art, said Ricardo. Art is my favorite subject, I called out. Only my art didn't get hanged up because I painted a horse and his head turned out like a fat wiener sausage. And so I had to tear it up and stomp on it with my shoes. Then that mean Jim did a cuckoo sign at me. You guys ever see? What, do you guys know what that means? Cuckoo sign? I think, I think Jim thinks Junie's crazy. And it was right in front of the whole entire grandparents. Yeah, only everybody makes mistakes, I said. Right, Mrs.? Right? Because on Saturday, you kissed a strange man in the grocery store, and then you stole a bunch of grapes. And so, even teachers make mistakes, right? Mrs. Face was so funny. Then her skin turned the color of reddish, and her voice couldn't say any words. How come you're not talking, Mrs.? I hollered out. Does the dead cat got your tongue? Just then, Grandma Miller made a loud laugh in the back of the room, and then I heard Grandpa laugh too. And pretty soon, lots of other grandparents were laughing and laughing. Hey, it sounds happy in this place, I hollered. After that, Mrs. didn't look so reddish anymore. Then we got out the freshments, and Grandpa Miller helped me put my cookies on a plate. Mrs. made announcement to room nine, and she said, only two cookies a piece for the children. Except I ate four delicious chocolate ones and nobody even saw me. Only that's not called stealing, that's called extras. After the freshmen's, the grandparents had to go home to their houses and so I hugged my grandma and grandpa very much. And then I hugged that mean Jim's grandma too and also Lucille's money bags, Nana. Love your earrings, I said. Then Mrs. saw me being polite, and she smiled very nice at me. Mrs. has white teeth. They are just like Grandpa Miller's teeth, only hers don't come out, I think. Except it's not for sure positive. And so guess what? I still wish I could hide in her hamper. That's what. Oh, well, that's funny. So Junie never got a chance to go to Mrs. house and see her and spy on her. Maybe that's in a different book. So the Judy B. Jones has a lot to say. Kindergarten. Kindergarten is where you go to meet new friends and not watch TV. Principal's office. That's where the boss of the school lives. His name is Principal. Principal is a baldy. Books. Right now, I just like the kind of books with pictures, but mother says that when I get big, I'm gonna like the kind with just words and also stewed tomatoes. So right now, Junie doesn't like stewed tomatoes. Pencil sharpeners. An electric pencil sharpener makes a nice noise and you can make pencils as teeny as you want. And that reminds me of some of our kids. You just keep pushing them into the little hole and they just keep getting teenier and teenier. It doesn't work on crayons so I tried the, a red one. Then the pencil sharpener slowed way down and it made a sound. And after that, it didn't go anymore. Sniffling. Dogs can smell everything. People can mostly just smell bad smells, like stink and flowers and dinner. The nurse's office. It's very cute in that place. There are two little beds where you get to lie down and two little blankets that are the color of plaid. The bathrooms. There's two kinds of bathrooms in our school, a boy's kind and a girl's kind. I can't go in the boy's kind though, cause no girl's allowed, that's why. Nail polish. I'm only allowed to have the kind of polish that makes your nails look shiny. Its name is Clear. Clear is the color of spit. That's interesting that she has this in the back of the book. Old Maid. Me and my grandpa Miller played Old, Ma old Maid and I win him five whole times in a row. I think she means I beat him five times in a row. That's because I kept on putting the old maid way higher than the rest of the cards and he kept picking it. Grandpa Frank Miller is a sucker, I think. Babysitter instructions. Babysitter instructions is 
all the stuff that I'm not allowed to do. Like no climbing on top of the refrigerator, no putting lipstick on my dog Tinkle. Oh, not Tinkle, Tickle. No putting lipstick on my dog Tickle and no making Ollie lick a potato, except for he didn't actually mind it up that much. The moonwalk tent. The moonwalk tent is like a big puffy house. You can jump far wide in that place. The fishing booth. All you have to do is hang a fishing pole over the table and somebody puts a toy on your pole. Only I just got a stupid dumb comb on my pole and that's all. I'm trying to figure out what these are all about. The sponge throw. It looks like the funniest game I ever saw. Because throwing sponges at principal is a dream come true. Well, that kind of reminds me of our carnival at the end of the year where we have the um, dunk tank with our principal. And this is about the author. That's the rest of the book.